Today, we're wrapping up the pedostatic puzzle by exploring how the vertical speed indicator functions. Take it easy, compared to the altimeter and airspeed indicator, the VSI is relatively straightforward. The vertical speed indicator works solely from static port. It's got a metal case with a diaphragm inside. Air comes in from the static port but goes into the diaphragm and the case separately. The diaphragm reacts to environmental pressure changes instantly because it gets that air straight from the static line. But the air hitting the case goes through a metered orifice, introducing a bit of a delay in its response to changes in pressure. This creates a temporary pressure difference between the diaphragm and the case, causing the diaphragm to contract or expand. This movement then shifts the pointer or needle on the VSI's face upward or downward. Let's take a closer look. As the aircraft climbs to higher altitudes, the ambient pressure drops. The diaphragm swiftly responds to this change. Yet, the pressure in the case takes a bit longer to adjust, resulting in it being higher than the diaphragm pressure. This squeeze on the diaphragm pushes the vertical speed pointer upward, indicating a climb. During a descent, the air pressure rises, causing the diaphragm pressure to increase faster than the metered pressure. This time, the diaphragm expands, moving the pointer downward to indicate a descent. In both scenarios, once the plane levels off, the metered pressure in the case eventually will catch up because it's only delayed, not cut off from the static port. Consequently, the vertical speed needle returns to zero position. Vertical speed tells the rate of altitude change, usually measured in feet per minute. Keep in mind, the rate is determined once the pressure difference stabilizes to a predefined ratio. This process takes a few seconds, causing a delay in obtaining a precise reading. When you're flying, be aware of this delay and take the VSI reading with a grain of salt. However, the needle's movement, be it upward or downward, instantly indicates the current trend in vertical speed, whether it's rising or falling, without delay. For instance, imagine a rapid climb where the ambient pressure suddenly drops, in this scenario, the VSI needle shoots up, signaling a rapid increase in altitude. Later, during a more gradual climb, the needle moves slightly downward, but as long as the airplane continues to go up, the needle remains above zero, confirming the climb. When it comes to descents, things flipped. Think of the trend indication this way, when the needle moves in the same direction as the airplane's trajectory, the rate of change is increasing, otherwise, it's decreasing. Since the VSI relies on the static port only, when it gets clogged, both the diaphragm and the case receive no pressure from the static line. This causes the vertical speed to read zero, regardless of the plane's actual actions. But don't worry, the alternate static source comes to the rescue. As both the direct and metered pressure still come from the same source, there's no real impact on the vertical speed except during the switch, there might be a very brief fluctuation in the reading depending on the altitude difference from where the blockage occurs. If the switch is done in a level flight, it might momentarily indicate a climb because the alternate source usually maintains slightly lower pressure than the environment. Hey, that's all about VSI and pedostatic system. In the next video we will move on to the gyroscopic instruments. Stay tuned!